In the previous segment, we uh, looked at uh, the definition of computational science for nanotechnology, which says use of advanced computational capabilities for understanding complex systems. And by complex system, what we mean is a system where you are changing different parameters, different materials under different temperature, pressure, volume, and also interfacial conditions. So, how they are connecting together, what are different kinds of bonds between them, what is the chemical structure of them, what is the dynamics of the particle as they move together, and how they create different kinds of vibrational spectra at different level. So, in that we also understood that uh, there are different scales, and we talk about uh, Armstrong scales, micro nano scales, which is where we will be dealing with the molecular dynamics. And then we also look at things like meso scales, where we go much larger particles and uh, millions of particles there. And then we also go to continuum scale, where it becomes meters and kilometers. And our effort in this course is to understand the microscopic properties of the material using molecular dynamics simulations, and then find out about the bulk properties. So, by doing small calculation with less than a few thousand particles, we want to cal calculate what will be the temperature at the bulk, what will be the density at the bulk. We want to understand what is the vibrational modes of material, how does it behave, how does it change phase. All of that uh, melting temperature, we want to know the vaporization temperature, we want to know the specific heat of the material. All of these bulk properties by doing a small number of calculation using molecular dynamics. Isn't that wonderful? And that's the power of technology. So we are now focusing going from first principle ab initio calculation to density functional approximation to LCAO, MO, Hartree-Fock methods to going into molecular dynamics and a little bit of we will also touch upon Monte Carlo system to the finite element and uh, finite difference methods. So now <coughs> let's begin the definition of molecular dynamic simulations. This is a computationally deterministic method to calculate properties of material from atomic trajectories by integrating Newton's second law of motion for particles under given conditions. So if you look at all we are doing in molecular dynamics is solving the Newton's laws of motion and the second law of Newton which says F is equal to MA and then we are going to calculate the trajectory of the particle uh, using a particular interatomic potential model and with different boundary conditions. So if you look at the trajectory of large number of particles, we have gone through the phase space. So what I mean by phase space is that let's say if I am looking at temperature and the time scale. So the, if the particle has sampled the entire space in which it is going through trajectory, and then if I look at hundreds of such particles and now take an ensemble average, that's when I can predict the bulk properties and that comes from uh, a very well defined models in the physics and uh, that's called statistical mechanics. So we are going to use a lot of statistical mechanics. But for a molecular dynamic system, now focus on interatomic potential. So we first and very important aspect of this molecular dynamic system is to define interaction between let's say two particles or three particles or multiparticles. For the sake of simplicity, we will just take pair potential. What I mean by pair potential is the potential between two particles. So if I look at two particles, when they come closer or they, when they go farther, what kind of forces are they feeling? And then we can also define thermodynamic ensemble. What I mean by that is in thermodynamic way, you have temperature, volume and pressure. These are the three fundamental quantities. So with that, uh, we are able to figure out whether we are going to keep the temperature constant and vary the pressure and volume, or we are going to keep the pressure constant while changing the temperature and volume, or we are going to keep volume constant and change the temperature and pressure. We're looking at these ensemble, and that creates a different thermodynamic ensemble. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. But then we go to initial condition and the position of the velocity. So we take a bunch of particles, put them in a box, and then shake them up with different velocities, and then put boundary condition, whether it's a bulk material, where the boundary condition is such that it's periodic. So a particle behaves like a bulk, or I can put reflecting walls or 
confine those particles in a small uh, walls which are reflecting. So, if it hits, it gets reflected. That is what we call is boundary condition uh, with the reflecting wall. So, with these conditions and different kinds of conditions, now we can look at how we solve the molecular dynamics trajectories. So, let us talk a little bit about Newton's laws of motion. As you know, in your undergraduate physics or even your high school, you have learned about laws of uh, uh, physics, which is the Newton's laws of motion. And this is the first thing you will learn in the, in the kinematics or you will learn into mechanics. So, the first law says if a body is in uniform motion, it will remain in motion and if the body is at rest, it will remain at rest unless acted upon by a non-zero net force. So, if we look at a particle, let us say this mouse, it is at rest, that means the net force on this particular mouse here is zero. As soon as I start pushing it, then I, the net force is not 0 and that is where it starts moving and it will keep moving until there is another force which is friction and that you can look at that. So, if you look at the second law of motion which is very important for our molecular dynamic simulation, we talk about rate at which a body momentum changes that is equal to the net force acting on the body. So, if you rate of change of momentum, so we are looking at mass which is the uh, property, inherent property of material based on the atomic structure of it and then the acceleration. Acceleration gives the momentum to the particles and that is where the famous equation comes from. It is called second law of Newton called F is equal to m a which is mass into acceleration. So, this is the model that we are going to use once we put all these particles in a box, give them some velocity uh, that means we are giving it some momentum and then seeing how they behave and what kind of interaction happens when they hit each other or they come very close or they go too far with the pair potential, the, the equation of uh, force between the two particles which is called pair potential, that is what we will look at. And then we will solve the trajectory using F is equal to m a equation, but then I should also mention the third law of motion which says that object A exert a force on object B then object B exert an opposite directed force of equal magnitude on A. So, these are the three laws of motion and this is the third one which says equal and opposite reaction. So, this is where we are going to use some of these laws to understand the particles and how they behave with each other. So, if you look at the solution of the problem happens in, sol in, in the way we solve the uh, the equation of motion and so now what we will do, we will try to understand different parameters like kinetic energy, potential energy. When we give a, a number of particles a certain velocity and they start with a certain position and then we know the position and velocity solving the equation of motion, now we can calculate some of the properties using what we call ensemble averages and that is where we want to understand how we can calculate kinetic energy, potential energy and all the other parameters like pressure, volume, temperature. So, this is what we are going to focus on in, uh, in our model and we now understand the molecular dynamics is a, re, uh, is a deterministic process and it will allow us to calculate the trajectory of the motion and so, uh, the, if you look at the definition of the molecular dynamics simulation is a computational deterministic method to calculate properties of materials from atomic trajectories by integrating Newton's second law of motion for particles under given conditions.